at the crease, the show which takes you behind the scenes of the Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship. Today, my guest needs no introduction whatsoever. It is Ricardo Paul. Ricardo, how are you doing today? Uh, doing great. I'm actually just getting ready to head to the ground for, I think, one of the most important game, not necessarily for us, but for uh, Parham Veer. <laughs> it is true. Uh, things are certainly <laughs> tense and tight there. And funny enough, Atlanta Fire has actually clinched a qualification spot already. What has the experience been like uh, so far in this tournament for you guys? I think um, it, it's been a very good experience. It's been up and down. Uh, we've lost a couple of games, but in the process, we have learned in terms of the best combination going into the playoff. Um, the the final eleven to be on the field, and I think that makes it all worth it at the end of the day. I think you you win some, you lose some, but in the process, you learn your best combination as a team. Alrighty, and then when you look at it, the experience that you have at the regional level, at the international level, you know, what do you see your role as in a team like Ant Antifer? Well, I, I think it's 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 more of a mentorship, also while making sure that they. The, the, button, the button order pretty much stays solid, um, saying that middle to balance it, whether it be we get a good start or a bad start to make sure that we can finish well and put um, the team in a winning position no matter what. Let's step back from the field a bit because you transitioned over to the States a little while ago. You know, how have you found um, that transition from international cricket life now into more of the administration and more of the family life. How has that transition been for you? I would say that it's been really good. I mean, um, coming into the country, we were fortunate to know that we have our companies. Um, my wife's company um, was one that um, we really came into the country on. Um, the main reason for the move was mainly because of my son, um, my last son, who had autism, and he's doing great. Uh, so I think overall, the move has been great. Cricket is now picking up in America, which is good. I mean, we have laid a lot of groundwork in the last six years with ICC America to get cricket where it is. And now you have the minor league and all these other leagues that are, which is really show that the the, the platform of the um the ICC America and what we did six I would not not, not even six years ago, so probably four years ago. Um, that, that platform has really stood up and um now. I, um, Ace and MLC and all these guys are building on that to make sure that cricket can become one of the most recognized sports here in America. Now, this show is all about cricket, yes, but there's another element to it that's a bit more fun and relaxed, Ricardo. So in preparing for our interview today, I couldn't help but notice on your social media a slight love for carnival. Uh, would you consider <laughs> yourself to be someone that enjoys soca music? Oh, yeah. I mean, um, I try not to miss a carnival, pretty much. Um, <laughs> once it's there, I'm there. I mean, my wife is from Trinidad and Tobago. I lived there for almost 10 years, and it's, it's just a part of me. Um, I, I definitely, as I said, I'm a Jamaican Trini. <laughs> right, when you look at it then, all right, let's see. What would be one or two songs, if you could choose, um, a soca song that is your must-play playlist? Oh, I mean, it's there, there's so much... Um, but um, I, I can like take off the top of my head. I mean, Savannah Grass is one of my favorite uh -huh. um, by, by Kess. Um, Marshall is by far um, my top soccer artist. I mean, there's so many, I can't even begin to get into his playlist. <laughs> um, but I mean, to me, it is just a, a feeling that you can't really describe in terms of soca music when you're there and you, you land, you come off that plane and you land in Port of Spain and um, you hear that music. Um, even if you decide that, hey, you know what, I'm in America or wherever you are in the world and you said, I'm not going. And the season comes around and you start hearing that music. It's like whatever that ticket is, whatever the cost of that hotel is, you just have to be there. And it, it's just the same vibe as you would know. I mean, you're from Barbados. So um, when crop over comes around, it's like, it's, it's like a jumbie. You have to be there. And that that is the Caribbean vibe. I, I definitely agree. I definitely, see, it was interesting. I was like, you know what? I need to touch this soccer topic because I I missed the carnival vibe because obviously with COVID and everything, you know. So there's that withdrawal inside of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear people talking about twenty thirty two for the next carnival. I'm like, you must be crazy. <laughs> agreed, agreed, agreed. Yeah. Doing my research, I was able to pull a quick trivia question. So, are you ready for this trivia question, Ricardo? 
Sure. All right, let's see. <clears throat> in the 2003 World Cup, which bowler defended nine runs in the final over against South Africa? 2003 World Cup, but I should notice I was there. Yes, where? <laughs> which bowler defended nine runs? Mm -hmm. Wow. I guess. That, and, and the, was that Andy Bickle? I'm trying to remember if it was Andy Bickle. No, 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 no. He's from your team too. It was actually Vasper Drakes. But you said you said the final. Um, when you say the final, I'm thinking oh, sorry, that was not the final, final of the World uh, Cup. No, no, sorry, not the final, but play. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All right. Yeah, so. I, well, that was the opening game against South Africa. Yes, it was. Yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't forget that game. I mean, like, <laughs> yo, we won that game. That was like the, the World Cup final. I, I know I understand why you say it's the final because that was like <laughs> the World Cup final. <laughs> Well, yeah, you actually scored a blistering 40, I think, in that game as well. Yeah, yeah. Sawan and I had a very good partnership in the end. Here we got like about 60 or 70 runs from about, I think, 20-something balls. Yep. You know, and you've actually, funny enough, been a part of several memorable moments in West Jeans cricket. Is there one or two that stands out more for you? Well, I mean, obviously, I think up to this day, I still live by that innings in terms of the 124 against India and Singapore. I think that's something that I will always remember. Um, but um, there, there were many other innings in terms of that I've played in terms of getting close to 100 and just didn't um, follow through. Um, Champions Trophy in terms of memories that would go down in the books in terms of winning champion trophies with Bradshaw and Brownie yeah. at the end there. Famous in, with, yeah, winning that. Um, so, I mean, in between, you had some rough times in terms of touring and losing, but I think the memories of winning Champions Trophy, um, 1999, Singapore making that 100, and just really being able to play over 100 ODIs for the West Indies, that's something that I will um, take with me. I mean, those things you can't really relive, and those are memories that you will always take with you. Definitely agreed. Well, one final question for you, Ricardo, as I bring it back now to the minor league. It's going to be a very tight scenario, a tight situation. Do you think that Atlanta Fire can be the first winners of the Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship? I think we definitely have the capability of doing so. Um, we have to look at the fact that all the other teams are playing well and we're going into the playoffs now. So it's pretty much like the best against the best. Um, we, we might have a slight advantage that our playoffs will be at home because we top the table. Um, but again, we're just hoping that it's T20 cricket typically can swing anyhow. We just have to make sure we continue to um, plan accordingly. I think we have a very coach, a very good coach on board in Brenton Parchment. I think he plans well and try to make sure that we have the best 11 in the best format possible to execute. And once we continue to play um, that way and give our 100% every single time we go on the field, I think we're definitely capable of doing so. But again, as I said, it's T20 cricket and anything is possible. No problem. Well, Ricardo, it's been a pleasure a chat with you here at the crease and certainly wishing you and Atlanta for all the best going forward. Thanks, Gerald, man. All the best. Mm -hmm.